Our headlines for you today. The HS2 rail line between Birmingham and Manchester will be scrapped after days of uncertainty. The announcement is expected from the Prime Minister later. Yes, there's talk that the money saved will be used to boost the economy in other ways in parts of England and Wales. I'll take a look at how passengers and businesses are responding to the news. A bus crashes off a flyover in Venice and catches fire, killing at least 21 people. An army investigation into the death of 19-year-old soldier Jaisley Beck concludes that she probably took her own life and sexual harassment from her boss may have contributed. Panic and confusion as the VAR audio from that controversial disallowed goal for Liverpool last weekend is made public. Yeah, delay the game, to delay the game, stop the yeah, game. The free start of the game. On field. Yeah, the free start. Yep. It shows how the incorrect decision was reached with human error to play. The diaries kept by the government's former chief scientific advisor, Sir Patrick Valance, uh, during the pandemic have been made public at the second part of the COVID inquiry, which looks at the decisions taken by the government at the start of the pandemic. In them, he criticises what he calls Boris Johnson's, quote, impossible flip-flopping and bipolar decision-making. UK rail passengers face major disruption on Wednesday with train drivers walking out as part of a bitter, long-running dispute over pay and conditions. The strike coincides with the final day of the Conservative Party conference in Manchester. Many parts of the country will have no service at all. A new law to strip people who murder their partners of parental rights over their children will be introduced. It follows a two-year campaign by the parents of Jade Ward, whose killer Russell Marsh retained rights over their children. Under current laws, killers need to be consulted on decisions affecting their children. Wednesday morning papers, shall we? And the I leads with the Home Secretary Suella Braverman's conference speech to the Tories yesterday in which she warned of what she called a hurricane of migration coming to the UK. Uh, the paper described it as a hardline job application to one day replace Rishi Sunak as her party's leader. Well, The Guardian also features a photo of Suella Braverman, but the story looks ahead to the Prime Minister's keynote speech today, something we will be doing. It reports that Rishi Sunak will tell delegates that voters are exhausted and pledge to fix Britain's political system. The Times this morning features a story about the potential risk of excluding a work colleague from a WhatsApp group. An employment tribunal judge has ruled it could be discriminatory to uh, cut someone out. And the Beckhams feature in many of today's newspapers. David, Victoria and their family. I think we have a little image to show you. Um, We'll show it to you in a moment um, because it was the premiere of their Netflix documentary last night. And it was quite, it's, you know, all of them all together. I think we might be able to show that to you now. It's no, a we can't. big red carpet affair, wasn't it? All of them lined up. Should we paint a picture with words? Yes. They were very smart. I think That's you nice probably hair. know what they look like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> very, you yeah. know what they look like. <laughs> exactly right. Do you know what? I love this story, Sal, in The Sun today about a lady who's a personal trainer in Edinburgh and her name okay. is Siri Price. And guess what Siri. happens? Exactly. Every time she walks into the gym or other people walk into her gym, they say, Hey, hey Siri. Siri. And all the iPhones go nuts and no. activate the voice recognition thing. Yeah, exactly. So she's now had to change her name. She from hasn't. Siri. Yeah, she's now going to be called just Sis by her work pals okay. because it's the only thing she can do uh, to stop oh. uh, triggering the old, um, the old Siri is... voice. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Siri is a very unusual name, to be fair. There can't be many people that's happened to. Yeah, and she says, uh, I've, got, I've always wondered, what, if you're called Alexa... Oh, yes. That must cause havoc in yeah. your house. Yeah, uh, apologies to anyone who's all... The, yeah, all your devices are probably if all I've going off right off now. Siri, Alexa, morning. everything. If you're called Google, it's less <laughs> of a problem. But, yeah, interesting way we have to rename ourselves. I love this story in The Times today. This is a great one. Sumo wrestling, John. How interested are you in sumo wrestling? Uh, <laughs> How much do you know? I've never had a game. <laughs> well, now could be the time because really? guess what? what? You don't have to be quite so tall or quite so heavy to be a sumo wrestler anymore because okay. there are very strict rules in Japan about this. Japan Sumo Association has dropped the rule saying that you need to be above a certain height and a certain weight because normally they're quite sturdy, yeah. aren't they? Um, because there's not enough people applying to be sumo wrestlers. In the past, Aspiring wrestlers often drank gallons of water before the weigh-in to meet the weight requirement. One even had a silicone implant to make himself taller. Really? 
Yes, the extreme How much they thing. want to do. It's big prize money, isn't it? Massive. It's interesting because most of the stories you get these days are about us having to adapt sports and lifestyle yes. to, for, for, for us to be bigger. And this is in reverse to uh, allow people to be a bit smaller. The authorities are unlikely to admit women who are banned from entering the sumo ring. It's still male only. Yep. Okay.